if you're anything like me, then one of the big benefits of studying is the ability to, or the excuse to buy a lot of stationery at the beginning of the year. However, I want to encourage you, as I tell all my students, to save the highlighter. This means put your highlighters away. Uh, when you're studying and in the exam, both of them, why? Although we don't really realize it, highlighters and highlighting or even underlying information is a very passive form of learning. It's a little tricky and it's a little bit dangerous because the message that your brain is getting is I've dealt with the information, I've thought about the information because I have highlighted it. I haven't necessarily made notes on it to keep the information for later or you know to to make it easier to come back to and, and and identify it later and use it but I have dealt with it I have thought about it now if you've got loads of time that's kind of okay because you can come back to what you felt was important and think about it again but in an exam if you think about it um, if you highlight information in an exam, you know, if you imagine that as you're reading through an exam, you're highlighting, and let's be honest, we, we tend to color in our paper, we highlight a lot, then when you come back and look at it later, you have a whole bunch of highlighted information, but what you don't have is why each of those bits of information have been highlighted. Why is that information important? What are you actually going to do with that information. How do you know what you're going to do with that information when it comes to actually answering the question? Wait, I know. You're going to have to read the highlighted information again. Now you've read it once in order to highlight it and you're now reading it a second time in order to identify what it was that you highlighted it and why you highlighted them. What are you going to do with them? So if you're in an exam, you're wasting time. Okay? It doesn't make sense to highlight information only to come back and go, well, I know this information is important, but I don't know why it's important. So I'm going to have to read it in order to find out why it's important. Then all you've really done is taken out the few bits of information that you didn't highlight and go, well, I've saved myself time because now I don't need to reread the words that I didn't highlight. It doesn't make any sense. When you are in exams, you need to make sure that you are studying and that you are reading actively, which means when you read a piece of information, you need to note down the very first time that you read it, why do you feel that information is important? What is it going to do for you? Depending on what subject you're studying, obviously you know what the syllabus is, you know what the outcomes are, so you should be able to identify this is what type of information this is. When I read this particular sentence, it's about a fixed asset, or it's about an audit, it's about a pre-engagement, it's about a tax loss, it's about a variable cost. Whatever the case is, when you read a sentence or a piece of information, you should be able to identify in that particular subject, in that particular case study, this is what this information represents. Okay? You should be able to identify why you think it's important. This does take practice, which is why I say that you need to do this when you study as well. We find it very easy to use a highlighter because we just run through it and we go, as I'm reading it, oh, that's important, oh, that's important, yes, that's important too. But by the time you've highlighted an entire case study, picking apart which information belongs for question one, question two, question three, all of a sudden doesn't work anymore. And the only way that we're going to be able to do that is by reading the case study again. And that obviously means time. And time is something that you don't have a lot of. So getting used to ditching the highlighter, ditching the underlining, and forcing yourself to make a note, some kind of note of everything that you read. If you thought it was important, then you should be able to identify why it's important. Okay? Because if you can't identify why it's important, then I challenge your thinking on why it's important. You can't highlight something and go, oh yes, that's important. Well, why, Vaughn? Why do you think that's important in this particular exam? I don't know. I just know that it's important. Why? Because it's a big word? I don't know. Okay? So, I lecture auditing. That, you know, auditing is my, is my specialty. So, I say to students, if they read something and they go, it's important, uh, then I say to them, well, write an R next to it if it's a risk. Write a PRE next to it if it's a pre-engagement activity. Write a little I and D. 
if it's an independence issue, okay? Because you should be able to identify what this information means to you. If you read a piece of information and you say, well, I, I should know what that is, uh, and I, you know, I've, I've identified and I've noted what the previous information is, I should know what that is, I know it's important, but I'm not sure why, then by all means, put a question mark next to it. It's only you that needs to know what you're doing on a case study. It's only you that needs to know what you're going to do with the information. So by all means, use a question mark. You know, if you think it's a risk and you're not sure, then put a question mark in there. So when you actually come to use the information, uh, you can say, well, I know I wasn't so sure about this. This means, you know, if you're doing this type of thing, it means when you get the question or you start answering and the question, for example, is, you know, discuss, discuss risks, you can immediately go to items that you noted as important for risks and go and deal with those first before you go back and read the rest of the case study. The difference between active reading and passive reading is consciously making sure that you notate why you, what you're going to do with that information. Why is it important for you? Highlighting tricks your brain into thinking that you've dealt with the information and it files it and it go, I'm done with it. Yes, I've read it, I've looked at it, I've dealt with it. And even if your brain does consciously think about why it's important, if you don't note it down, by the time you get to the end of the case study, you're going to forget it. Make no mistake, this is going to take time when you study. It's going to take time for you to practice this. And the first time, first couple of times you do this, it's going to probably take you so long that you're probably want to, going to want to give up and say to me, well, Yvonne, this thing just doesn't work. But I ask you to think about how many times you read a case study, you read paragraphs in the case study, and you reread information in the case study when you're actually in an exam or when you're actually doing the question. Every minute you spend rereading the same paragraph in a case study in an exam is time away from actually thinking about it and answering it. So save the highlighters. Uh, you know, write pretty love letters with them, write motivational posters with them. Make sure that you can identify why the information is important. Work on some kind of code for yourself as you go through case studies of identifying what you would use that information for. Why is it important for you? Where would you use it? What type of calculation it belongs in? Uh, what category of, of question or what category or style of information it would come, it, it, it would be handy in. If you get the required with the case study, if you get the questions with the case study, then there's a possibility that you might actually be able to identify, well, that thing is definitely for question one, and that piece of information is definitely for question two. And that's quite handy, because then when you get to question one, you know which stuff to look at first. But if you get the required after reading time, if you only get the required after you've read through the case study once, then you need to work through the information and say, what does this mean to me as an auditor or as a tax consultant or as a, an accountant or whatever the case is? Uh, what does that mean to me before I get the question?